marshalling cards, task force mats, access and allies, fleet trays, womble zones, whatever you want to call them. It's these sort of things. Um, that's an American one. Um, British one, that was the first one I made. And super cool, gotta say it's super cool. Japan, rising sun flags, always um, floated my boat. There's also a, a German one. There's an American button, American flag, stars and stripes, so on and so forth. You know how they work. Size-wise, um, these ones are approximately four inches by three inches. Um, by a bit of luck, I happen to have an offcut in my pile of offcuts and junk. It may have been part of the bigger piece when I cut them. I don't think it was though. I think it's just pure random chance. It's a fraction smaller, a smidge smaller. I'm not going to worry about that. So sue me. Um, however, obviously lengthwise it's way too long. I have to cut that off. Health and safety comes into it. Big lump of wood. Don't cut through the table. Don't cut through your leg. You can get a pucker perspex cutter for scoring these. I've got a standing knife. It works okay-ish. But to keep yourself on a good straight line, um, a set square. Okay, I'm hoping this remains in focus and my fingers remain attached. We've got the set square on here. We've got the perspex pushed up the set square. We are roughly in the right place. Measure twice, cut once is, a, is an old um, saying. And standing knife. Now I'm going to be standing up, putting as much pressure as I can on keeping everything stable and in one straight line, keeping my thumbs out of the way and using the back of my leg to hold the wood in place. So here we go. You can do several light cuts in the same place. The first cut is going to go through the protective sheeting on this perspex. Camera's Probably wobbling a bit because everything's wobbling. Now, a pucker perspex knife would do that probably in one pass. But when you're working with small pieces, got the score line. Let me check the camera to see whether you can still see it. Yes, you can. Okay, got the score line on there. Press down really firmly with the score line just hanging over the edge. Ready for this? How's that? And you may be able to see. Oh, -ho, dead straight line. Here it is, there's the cut, nice and straight, no problem at all. It's, it's worked out really quite well. I take it outside and do the deburring out there because these little bits of plastic, they can get everywhere. Um, I don't want my dog to eat them. I don't eat them myself, actually. Um, it's come out at the right size, just about, um, it's maybe, a mill longer than this previous one. It doesn't matter, they're getting thrown down and thrown around and they're gonna be used. Um, give me a couple of minutes to um, deburr this and get it all ready for the painting process, which is can be fiddly depending on how much input you want to put into it. Um, believe me, the first few ones, the Stars and Stripes one was so simple to do. Um, I'll see you in a bit. Here it is. All nicely done, deburred, got the um, sharp edge off, taking the protective sheet off as well. That's ready for painting. Before we go down to there, let's just show you some of this with these buttons here. Um, the, these are the, the most awkward things to make. Um, you see I've got a pair of engineer's dividers. I used to be an engineer. Um, it's set for the diameter, or the radius, should we say. Now, to cut these circular, I'm getting my hand in front of the camera all the time, don't worry. To cut these circular, it's difficult. It, it is difficult as a difficult thing that's difficult, but we manage it. Um, we're going to put these dividers on the radius somewhere near to one nice little edge. And we're going to be scoring with the dividers because they actually will score. Um, I shall stand up for this. Try and keep everything in the right place and just start marking round a circle. Similar to how we were doing it with the, um, 
the um, Stanley knife. Oh, I just moved now. That's buggered it. Try and find my center again. Um, and just mark that circle around. And that's given us the start of it. You don't really want to see me going around 15 times, I'm damn sure. But in a similar process, exactly the same way as we had done previously with the, with the snapping, you can snap these in the same way. You've got a mark to snap to, and it will, with a pair of um, pliers, which is what I use, you will snap to the scored mark. It won't be anywhere near as neat as this, or as neat as that previous one. However, it will score, it will leave a mark, and you will be able to break through into this plastic. After that, with a fairly reasonable um, metal file, file it down into that circle. Back out into the conservatory, um, his plastic piece with some masking tape, just to go over the areas that we're not going to be spraying for sure. Um, I saw the photograph with the um, photocopy of the Russian flag, this one we're going to be making. I've cut out um, the sickle and the stars um, and we've got our disc ready as well, our button as well. Now we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be putting the uh, paint on the side that's got the little indent in it that was the centre of the divider so you won't actually feel that or see that when the job's done. Um, all you have to remember is that the um, the second colour we're going to be painting will be the white, the first colour will be the grey. If you want it the other way around or use actual colours for yourself then be my guess. But just have a thought in your head of which way around the colours are going to go. Now literally this very very, oh, for let me hand, this very very small piece of um, Russian flag that's cut out just with a pair of scissors. I haven't been in anything poncy or fancy because the um, the rough and ready way or effect I want on these <laughs> hides a multitude of sins. So literally all we're going to do in the um, most old fashioned sense of, of doing this is remembering that the coloured side is the side we're going to be seeing on the finished article. A lick and stick on your tongue and onto the the um, back side of your perspex. Um, there it goes. I should also put on the star. Can we? It's just fallen off. <laughs> lick and stick on there. Same with the star. Lick and stick. And then I'm going to spray it. Give me a second to get this back and up. See you in a bit. Okay, there you go. There they are in the in the uh, paint box. Um, it's on the reverse side. Uh, as you can see, that's the way they're going to be showing up, if we can get that in focus and things. Um, however, um, I won't be showing you the ch -ch -ch with the painting. You know how that works. But there you go, that's a coat of um, the grey primer over it. Now, just using a cocktail stick, just here, I shall lift off the, um, the paper transfers, give it a little scrape where that piece of the uh, sickle has just lifted. It may need dressing out, but... Again, a little, just a little touch with this. It doesn't matter how rough and ready these are. We, the rough and ready look is what I'm going for. Yeah, as I thought, the um, the part of the sickle had lifted by just enough to let a dusting of uh, the grey paint go underneath, but it wasn't um, a really deep dusting of grey. So just with the cocktail stick, I managed to drag some of that paint away very easily. The paint hadn't even dried. It was it was just that sort of pounderiness. Same with part of the star, it wasn't quite as neat as I wanted it to be. So again, the cocktail stick, it's only a bit of you know, wooden end to it. It's just enough just to drag it away and just to dress it. Now, I've put the top coat on of white, which is the side you're gonna see. Uh, it's barely dried, it's only been only a couple of minutes, but it's just enough to be touched dry. Pick it up, take it out, um, and there we have the sickle. Um, on the bigger sheet itself, which is Probably the one you're waiting to see. Oh yeah, that's that's gorgeous. Um, let, that's going to have to dry properly 
um, before I can start doing the next job on it, which would be the, the, the dressing and the cleaning and, the, and the, the rock and roll side. However, before we do that, there's a third coat to go on there, and that is some of this quick dry lacquer. Um, it's, the, it's the same um, matte, trade, painty, cleary, varnishy, lacquery, acrylic varnishy stuff that I use on my figures. Remember, this side I've just sprayed will be the underside of the whole thing. And so um, the, the amount of damage on that will be absolutely minimal because it's going to be upside down with some little felt feet on there. So that would never be touched ever, ever again in the whole wide world. Um, let me let that dry for about 15, 20 minutes and I'll show you the next stage. And we have here the sickle. It is now dried on the button. One of my pads of um, many pads. Pull one off, stick it on the back, line them up a little bit gently and drop it on there. The paint now is completely protected by the felt pad. The front can't get damaged because it's there's nothing on there to damage. Remember the spot that was in the middle when we used the dividers, that's in the back so you don't see that. And you've got one complete button. We haven't finished the tray. It is still in its complete mucky state. What we're going to use to clean it up is, well, peeling off the masking tape for a start. That's got rid of 50% of the work you've got to do. Um, the rest of it comes around. And we're left with, it's stuck on my fingers. We're left with um, some part of a Russian flag in cool grey and white, which is the, the cool colour at the moment. Um, we're going to be using a little bit of kitchen tissue, some of this stuff, and surgical spirit. Don't know what it's called, where you come from. It's called surgical, surgical spirit, where I come from. Um, we use it to um, help get the nits. Is it, is it nits or is it whatever? Is the bugs that stick onto to dogs and keep sucking and give them Lyme disease and you know we we, we suffocate them with this stuff. <laughs> I'm not a serial killer, by the way. But this stuff is really cool. You put some on the tissue. I like this. And you find an edge that's somewhere away from from where the, the, the nice part is. The nice part to me is where the, the, the sickle is, the sickle and the, the sickle and the um, hammer. And so as we're just going to dress on this side, just rubbing it with this rubbing um, alcohol. It might be called rubbing alcohol, you'll come from its surgical spirit over here, but it's probably got different names. And what it starts to do is it just starts to lift that sharp edge that you we created with masking tape and with the... Um, the um, paper uh, and it, it, it gives that softened broken edge and even even get your nail in there give it a scrape and completely ruin some parts of it if you want to um, when it comes down to the, the this side which is, which is where the flag hammer and sickle is on this side I'm being a little bit careful but I want to get a nice sort of rounded finish now as you can see just there We've rounded the edge, we've softened the edge. Um, on the bottom here, I'm going to be completely vicious with it. I'm really going to scrub in hard and use a nail. You could even use a knife if you wanted to. Probably don't want to scratch that perspex, but you know what I mean. You can be quite vicious with it um, and get that ruined tattiness that's going in there. Um, it's, the, it's the surgical spirit that does half the work for you. The other half is elbow grease and the third half is imagination. Um, do it to how you feel you want to do it. If you want to make them really neat and tidy, be my guest. Knock yourself out. Fill your boots. But I, however, like to leave them rock and roll. Tatty. Wart on. Um... I'm going to do a little bit more work on that. However, that is almost the finished example. Um, 
I'll show you when it's completely finished. Well, that took um, a fraction longer than I was expecting because the more I took off, the better it was looking. It's battered, it's bashed, it, that flag has been through some wars. Absolutely love it. So, all you're left with is this side completely um, perspect. That side's got the paint on it. So on this side, some of it with sticky feet that can go on there um, from my sheet of sticky feet. And my fingers don't work today again. Let's just stick them on there in the corners. And when you get four of them on there, it, it protects whatever you're putting them on and it protects the paint um, itself from being damaged. Um, my G40 board is covered in one huge sheet of Perspex, so there shouldn't be any problems with the board getting damaged. The other versions that, that I have don't go under Perspex, so it just stops them from the little bits of scrapes that you, you may or may not do, you know. Uh, but there we go, that's the finished one. That's the finished Russian one, finished Russian button. When I did the, the Japanese one, just by way of explanation, similar process, except we used one big white disc on the back and literally just strips of masking tape to make the, the sun rays radi radiating out of it. It possibly could have been the opposite way around on the colour scheme, having the sun as the grey, um, but I, I wanted that, that pop, because remember it's, it's red and white, um, so it's really... The, we we are back as it it just sort of pops a little bit. Um, the stars and stripes, literally, just cutting stars out, no problem at all, and strips of masking tape. It's it really is as as, as simple as that. Um, the UK was the harder one because of all the triangles, having to cut them and get them to be neat enough that I was I was happy with. Um, you. When you do the um, the buttons, you don't necessarily have to use that white spray. Um, you can just paint those in by hand and some masking tape. Because as you're going onto a clear surface, you actually get a very good finish. Um, but with the sickle, because it's such an intri intricate shape, I wasn't going to paint that by hand. Um, whereas these, you could paint and, and masking tape these without having to actually... Um, fiddle around too much but that is it we have th that's how you make um, marshalling cards fleet trays <coughs> womble zones whatever we're going to call them um, super easy super cool and great for access and allies hope you've enjoyed it um, all i'll finish off by saying is i make these videos in aid of a charity called the cure parkinson's trust there's a link down there to them and maybe one up there in the uh, banner on the channel page if you happen to have um, a spare dollar a spare euro a spare yak or a spare yen you could send to them then i'm sure they would appreciate it until next time be cool